Hi, I'm Marco Schwartz from the website Open Home Automation and this is the second part of my tutorial about how to design your own Arduino shield for home automation projects. And in this part two, I will show you how you can design the PCB of your shield. So just to remind you, this is what we want to design. I called it the weather shield because it has several um, sensors related to measuring the weather and this is a sensor that I included on this shield so you have a temperature sensor, you have a humidity sensor, a pressure sensor and also a sensor to measure the ambient light. So in this tutorial the objectives will be to learn the basics of EGLE which is uh, the software we will use to design the PCB and Two things that we will do is to design the cinematics of your shield. So how, how do the different components uh, connect to each other? And finally, we will design the layout of the board, which is actually the physical connections between uh, the components. So without further ado, I will uh, close this presentation and I will show you how to use Eagle. So the first step is actually to download Eagle and to install it. So Eagle is a software you have to pay, but don't worry, there is a free version available online. So you can just type in Eagle, and this should redirect to this website from uh, the editor of Eagle. And then I will wait until the site is loaded. Okay, so this is the main uh, website of Eagle, and then you can just go over there to download, download Eagle. And then you can find it uh, for your system, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So, the installation is quite simple, that's why we'll assume uh, that Eagle has been installed on your system for now and I will just close this window and I will open the software. So actually you can go in on Metis application, Eagle and you can just start it. Yeah, so this is what you get when you install Eagle with an already open project and I will, I will just close this project and I will explain you what are all these windows. So this window uh, in Eagle is called the control panel. And this is where you can access, for example, all your, your projects. And also over there you have the libraries. And this is something we will need to install now. Because most probably the components you want to use are maybe not in the basic libraries of Eagle. So one library I use is from the website Sparkfun, who actually they sell, they sell uh, products related to uh, open source hardware. And I will just type in Sparkfun uh, Eagle library. And this should um, send me to a, a git a GitHub repository where you can actually download um, these libraries. So just go there, and from there you can just uh, download uh, this EDA library and install it um, on your computer. It's very easy to do. You just have to copy um, the, the file contained in the zip file into um, into the uh, into the EDA, uh, rep uh folder. So it's quite easy to do. So in my Eagle installation, I already have this library installed, you can see them here, here. And what I will do before starting, I will just say libraries and use all, which will ensure that all the libraries will be available in the editor. And then you can actually file new, and create a new uh, schematic. 
file. And now it's all blank. And this is uh, the window where we will design our schematic. So just the representation of the components we will actually have on your board. And the first step will be to add all the parts. And I can just do this via add a part there. And this menu should load with many uh, parts available. And let's say I want to I want to place the first component, for example, this BMP um, pressure sensor. That's not the right one. Yeah, so you should see that BMP didn't work, but I just type in pressure and I got this BMP 085 sensor. So I will just say OK. And now uh, it'll uh, ask me why I want to place it. I'll just place it somewhere. And now you can just press escape and you go back to the add menu and then you can just repeat the process for all the components you have in your project. So maybe even before starting putting all the components, an important thing you have to do is to place uh, the component that will represent your Arduino shield. Because you don't want to place by hand all the, the pins of the Arduino board because there is already a component that is made for you. So again, go on add and just type in Arduino. And you can see that in this Sparkfun uh, library, you have this Arduino shield um, component. And you just join it, and you have several components corresponding to the shield. So usually I use the last one, which is called Arduino Shield No Silk. And just double click. And now I have a nice component that represents the pins of my Arduino Shield. So this is now the view when every component has been, has been placed. But there is still something missing, and this is uh, the power sources and the ground connections. So this actually is the same as placing components. You can just go in uh, the add part menu and type in 5, 5 volts, and you can use any anyone, uh, sorry, anything of these um, sources. For example, there is one smartphone, so it's 5 volts, and yeah, so I'll just use this one for now. And you can see it plates uh, 5 volt sources. I will do the same for the ground. The ground here, also from the Sparkfun library. And I can place the ground I, I need. This is now the, the correct schematics where I place every sources I need. So you have 5 volt sources, you have grounds, and you have 3.3 volt um, sources. Now the last step is really to connect the different components. So for example, I will connect one 5 volt. I first need to have the right tool, the whole line, and I can just connect my components with this draw lines uh, tool. For example, if I want to finish this sensor, I will just connect it to the to one uh, analog input. And there is no real strategy for this. You just have to, um, for example, you can try to do it one component after, after another. Just try to make sure that you, you obtain a clean, a clean schematic uh, at the end. And finally, this is what we get after all the wires have been, have been placed. Uh, this is the final schematic of uh, my circuit. Now what we want to do is to actually create the board itself. So for this, I will just click on this um, little icon on top, which is called Generate Switch to Board. And as, oh, that was the other one, sorry. So yeah, it asked if the board, um, called Vesa Shield, it doesn't exist yet. So he asked 
if I want to create it from the cinematic, I will just say yes. And now I will switch to this window here. Now I got the board view, which is a, a new view of inside Evil. And what I can do now is use the move tool and you can move around the components like this. You can move them and what you want to do is to put all the components on your board. And this one I guess I have to use uh, the select tool to select all the components and then move it. Yeah, like, just like this. And I can put it somewhere. Oops. So this, you can also move this outline of the board and at the end you can fit it to, um, to your PCB. So this is a result on, on my board and you can see that basically I, I placed uh, one sensor in each qu quarter of uh, the place available and I resized the outline of the board um, to fit my Arduino shield. So again there is no strategy for, for this part, just make sure that the components that need to be together like these two resistors and the capacitance have to be close to this uh, sensor and just try to make it look nice. That's basically all the advice I have at this point. And now the last thing we need to do is to route uh, the ball. Um, so actually making the connections between components and because what you see, this, these lines here, these are just uh, logical connections. So this is what you have to connect, but it's not yet physically connected. And there are two strategies for this. You can do it manually, so by using the, this tool here. But as it's a simple, a simple board, um, you can just do it automatically. And by doing this, you can go in Edo, it's tools, auto router, and now I opened this um, this new tool, and then I can just select um, the preferred directions of routing on the top layer, on the bottom layer. So for this board, I will only use two layers: one on the top, one on the bottom. You can use more, of course, but it's really not needed for um, a basic Arduino shield and it will cost you much more to fabricate the board if you have more than, than two layers on your PCB. And I will just now do OK. And now my board is uh, rooted. So it was, as I said, an easy board to root. So there was absolutely no problem um, that were uncluttered by the, the auto router. So everything looked nice. And now the board is nearly um, ready for production. The only thing you can still do is add some uh, text on your board, for example, which says um, who you are, who was the designer of the board, when it was done, and the name of the board. So for example, uh, in my board, I just added this uh, command that it's a, a weather shield and that's my name. It has been done in 2013 and this can be done using the, the text tool which is uh, just over there. So if you made it this far, well, um, congratulations because the actual design of your shield is finished. And the thing you still have to do to get your shield is to fabricate it and to test it and this we will see in the next part of this tutorial. So this is already the end of this presentation. So in the next video I will show you how to actually fabricate and test your Arduino shield.
So I hope you enjoyed this uh, second part of the tutorial. As always, don't hesitate to comment um, on YouTube, also on the corresponding article on our website, openhomeautomation.net. And I will see you in part three.